You're listening to The Straight Line on MRN.com, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices, every day. And also brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Hi, everybody. Welcome to MRN's The Straight Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ralph Shaheen, and we've been trying to figure this out. We were talking about before you actually got here, Doug Herbert. Um, you know, Doug flies, so we're thinking maybe we should call you. <laughs> you know, the Dougzilla thing, we get it. That was a whole drag racing thing. But now you're like, is it Pilot Doug, Captain Doug? I, I had to, I did a flight for some guys the other day, and I had to get a shirt with like epaulets. Uh, did you really? <laughs> yes. Maybe it's epaulette, Doug. How about that? No, no. Epaulette, Doug? Yeah, Captain. Captain, Captain Doug? Yeah. All right. And Ralph Shaheen and Captain Doug here ready to talk about drag racing. And uh, we're just about ready to wrap up the West Coast Swing. We're through Denver. We're now through Sonoma. We just got to get through the race up in the Pacific Northwest at Seattle. Um, you know, those Capco guys did it again. Just Torrance holding up a Wally. This time, Billy, uh, not Second Steve. win this year. I mean, a part-time team, right? They run part-time, a few races right? a year, and it's he's won two races. supposed to be the races. R&D car. Right. I, I can't ever remember a part-time team winning even. Well, last year, uh, Blake uh, Al- Blake Alexander won yeah. a couple races, and they yeah. were a part-time team. Other than that, I can't remember. I can't remember any time in the recent history that a part-time team won a race or even Two races, like I, I just okay. Don't so, what's that. the bigger shocker to you that a part time team won two races? Well, that would or, be a shock, but it's not that it's Torrance. Well, I was going to say, or is it the fact that this Torrance team, you know, continues just, to win, even though even if it's not Steve, it's the other car. Nine wins in the last ten races, and that's and I bet if we went back to twelve, I think that would that would be ten wins in twelve races. So yeah. that's a lot of win. I, I can't remember any time in recent history. A team being that dominant. Steve Torrance and that bunch is unbelievable. If unbelievable. you had to put your finger on one thing that you think is their reason for it, what, what would you say? Any idea? Um, no, the driver, not really. The driver, the tuner. The- I mean, I think Steve's doing a great job driving. Richard Hogan, Bobby Lagan are doing a great job running the car. They've also got a really good budget. They're not uh, running pars. They're not running parts that are, uh, you know, that if they think they can get three runs at them, but it's really only good for two runs. They'll run it for two runs. I mean, they, they aren't wanting for anything. You yeah. Know? They're, they're not wanting for anything. It's their hobby, right? They're yeah. not, it's not a business for them. This is their hobby. So it's like, you're going to go buy a new set of golf clubs. You're not doing it to go to the PGA. You're buying it so yeah. you can play better golf. And they're and playing that, with a new putter at every hole. <laughs> you got pretty much. Right. That's a good way to put it. I yeah. mean, that's what they're doing. Uh, from I what I understand. I this one and I putted it in. I got a birdie out of it. Throw that one into the crowd. Get another one. Well, but it would be, I, I did it. I putted it in. I got it. And I know this putter is not as good now as it was on the last time. So, yeah. for therefore, I'm going to get a new putter. Yeah, right. I guess. Crazy. To that point, though, uh, Robert Height gets number 50. We were, we were waiting to see if he was going to get 50 or John Force was going to get 150, and Robert beat him to the punch. I'll tell you what. The, the way that the Force funny cars are running this year, it's impressive. I mean, not only did Robert Height win the race, but low ET, top speed. And yeah. this is not the only time this year that he's low ET, top speed. I mean, he's winning or he's uh, leading the points by a pretty dominant amount, yeah. almost like Torrance is really in, in uh, top field. Mm-hmm. So uh, really, really impressive for the John Force racing team, Robert Height especially. I'm sure that 150 win will come along for Force, but yeah. great win for uh, Robert Height. Jimmy Proc, that team. I mean, those guys gel. That's another they one sure that just gels. And then the Harley guys. Man. I mean, even with the new bike, they haven't missed a beat. I think the new bike uh, almost seems like it helped them, right? Vance yeah. and Hines' uh, yeah. team, Andrew Hines and Eddie Craywick, they are just they're just kicking butt. I don't. They, there's no other way to say it. And everybody thought, well, maybe when they come out with those new bikes, that'll slow them down a little. Actually, kind of helped them. I mean, they in the final round, Andrew ran within you know a hundredth or so of low ET of the race in the final round. So, man. That's pretty good. That's a good time to run your best run is in the final round. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, we're going to talk with Robert Height as soon as we come back with more right here on The Straight Line. Welcome to the Speed Sport News Center. I'm Derek Prince. 
Suzuki presents Speed Sport. These are guys that you can take anywhere in the country and they can win on any given night. Oh, what a great shot. Buy your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store and pick up five quarts of O'Reilly conventional motor oil and a microguard filter for $21.99. Extend the life of your vehicle and save money with five quarts of O'Reilly conventional motor oil only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Hey guys, Corey the Joy. Join me and my friends, Lauren Fox and Daryl Mott, on the Sunday Money Podcast. As we talk racing. What happened in California? Like, what is that, you know? Yeah, they all sat at the end of pit road waiting for one guy to be the sacrificial lamb, and none of, nobody wanted to do it. And just life. Did you fall in love on TV? No, definitely not. I could not. Plus, you never know who might stop by. Young Ryan Blaney is here with something in his hand. I brought you our script because you guys are like our show, so. It's Sunday Money on MRN.com, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. <laughs> Welcome back to MRN's Straight Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ralph Shaheen, Doug Herbert with you. Uh, our next guest is the latest 50 race winner. That, of course, is Robert Hyde. Congratulations on that big win, Robert. But let's talk about what's really important. Last time I saw you was at the unveiling of the C8 Corvette, and I want to know, did you order one yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. But uh, John's name's definitely on the list. Uh, that was a cool event. Had a, had a lot of fun hanging out with the Chevrolet people. and. Uh, Boy, that's quite a new car they've got out. Well, you got to celebrate 50 somehow, man. I think a, a Corvette would be the way to go, don't you, Herbert? Well, I think Force should sign that Corvette over to you. Yeah. That's it. Hey, you know, Robert, congratulations. You're 50 win. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> 50 wins. Only the third driver to ever reach 50 wins, Robert. What an accomplishment. Did you have any idea when you went to your first drag race? I was reading Sonoma was actually one of the first, if not the first race that you went to. And now you won your 50th race there. Uh, can you imagine that you'd be where you are? Not a chance. I never thought I'd get one. Um, Sonoma was the first national event I ever went to. And, you know, I've gone to every single one of those races, either as a fan, working as a crew member, and now driving. But, uh, yeah, I remember going when I was uh, a kid going to Sacramento and watching the funny cars at a, a race called the Governor's Cup. And when I saw these cars, I thought, man, and these drivers, they're superheroes. It's like there's no way a guy can react and, and drive a car that accelerates as fast. And to think that I'm, I'm getting to do it now is uh, pretty amazing. Well, you and I must have been in the same grandstand at the same time because I grew up going to the Governor's Cup Funny Car Nationals at Sacramento Raceway, too. <laughs> so this was win number five for you this year. Um, you know, the first three wins came pretty quick, right? It was Pomona, then you you went to the semis of Phoenix and you win Gainesville. Then you went out in the first round of Vegas, but then you come back and win in Houston. Then you went on a bit of a drought, if you will, to Topeka and then again until Sonoma. What's made the difference there? And are you going to go back on another tear here? Well, I hope so. You know, we, we did have a car that was twisted and bent pretty bad, and we're not, we're not sure how that happened. Um, so, And I was having a hard time driving it. So, We've got that all fixed in a new car, and it's, it's easy to drive. I mean, it makes nice, beautiful, straight runs. Um, and I think, I think, you know, there's a lot of people and critics that think that Jimmy Proc and Chris Cunningham only know how to run when the, when the conditions are good. But I think we proved everybody wrong, you know, Sunday in, in Sonoma. The track was 130-plus degrees for the, the last three rounds, and, you know, we, we, were, we were running well. Well, you guys have really been running well, and that was one thing I was going to ask you. Your uh, the uh, you know your relationship with Jimmy Proc. You guys have had some great success together, and then bringing Chris Cunningham on, which it's like those two guys are really have a lot of experience, and it just seems like what a what a team. I mean, you guys are it's just a powerhouse, unbelievable. I'm very fortunate. You know, uh, Jimmy went away for a couple years, and very fortunate to get him back. And honestly, I feel that when Jimmy came back here with Chris Cunningham, he's, he's a better crew chief, a better tuner. And uh, the two of them, they just listening to him on the radio or listening to him, you know, up in their office, getting ready to make a run. Uh, pretty, 
it's pretty fun just to listen to what's going on and what they what they're having to say. Matt Hagen from second round on basically had the best car at Sonoma. So going up against him in the final, we knew we were going to have to step it up. We didn't have lane choice, and you know they they weren't just making a, a wild guess. Uh, it was very calculated where they figured they needed to, you know, increase our performance. And we did just that, you know, went out there, run 97 and, you know, one of the hottest parts of the day and got the win. So it's uh, Chris Cunningham. He makes a lot of decisions too, right on the starting line. He'll, he'll make calls out on the, on the clutch and the tires. um, And Jimmy just goes with it. So they're a good team. Obviously you guys are in great position as you get, in towards the countdown and uh, obviously a team doesn't want to peak too soon. So as you look towards the countdown and everything that lays in front of you chasing this championship, what gives you the most confidence as you size up the countdown with this team? Well, I think, you know, even when we had a, like what you guys called the drought it, you know, we were running well, you know, we weren't lost. We have a good combination uh, other than Denver we're not testing a lot of things. We're not, you know, trying crazy things like we maybe have in the past. Um, five wins is the most I've ever had in a season. And to win this championship, Jimmy and I were talking about it in the winter circle last weekend, that basically, you know, we may have to win 10 races this year to win the championship. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I honestly feel that you're going to have to win three of the last six to be the champ. And, you know, uh, we still have a few to go before the countdown. Hey, Robert, first round you had a single, and then you've come out, and like your reaction time's gotten better and better, and, and uh, you were ready in that final round. Tell us, you kind of gave us a little bit of a hint as, uh, uh, as Hagen was really a strong car going up there without lane choice in the final. Did that really matter, or did that kind of rev you guys up and make you dig down a little deeper to pull it all out? Well, Jimmy, Jimmy and Chris uh, definitely picked our, our performance up. You know, they knew that Hagen was running better, and we had to get after it. And Hagen's great on the tree. So, you know, as a driver, you know, you've got to go up there and try to cut the best light of the day uh, because he's going to be right with you. And, you know, it all it all just worked in our favor. Uh, it was pretty funny. You know, it's like when once you get down there, you know, 800 feet, you're you're looking for the finish line. Well, all I was doing was staring at that wall to see hopefully see a wind light come on. And it definitely did. I know like most racers, you, you probably don't pay too much attention to the record book or, or anything like that. You figure it'll all take care of itself. But the 50 win mark was a big deal, and it was right there in front of you. You couldn't ignore it. You clicked that one off. What's next? Is there is there another one out there that you're kind of seeing in the future that, well, if I could hit that, that would be pretty cool? Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm looking now at championships. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of guys with two championships. Uh, you start to get three and four, the the list gets smaller. Um, you know, John Force has 149 wins, and he's going to get plenty more. That's unattainable. That's never going to happen. Um, you know, think about it. I'm I'm 99 behind him now, <laughs> and that's almost double what I have in total. So that's that's never going to happen. But uh, you know, Kenny Bernstein, Don Perdome, they've got four championships. That's uh, that's kind of a goal. Well, yeah, Kenny Bernstein and and Don Perdome are in pretty good company. Uh, that that that's pretty good company with you. What uh, Robert, tell us a little bit. Low ET top speed. You guys had really dominated that race. You said Hagen was a little bit stronger going in the final, but I don't know. When you're low ET, your top speed, your uh, the the performance that you guys have had this year at a lot of races has been low ET top speed. Ralph said you had a slump. I don't know. I kind of agree with well, you. I, I, I don't know I don't that you mean had it, a slump. I didn't mean it in, in, in that way, but I mean, just you can see there is a gap, uh, you know, in between oh, yeah. some of those victories. So yeah, drought's not necessarily the right <laughs> word, and I didn't. You know, I certainly wasn't trying to offend Robert with that, but no, just no, saying, no, no, no. I get it. I yeah. get it. You mean we go to every race and want to win? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think you're going to see in Funny Car what Steve Torrance is doing. You know, winning that many races and that many consecutively that's not going to happen um but i feel that we've been strong everywhere you know um even you know the conditions friday night we were number one qualifier we're a killer the marine lair comes in there it's really fast so but on saturday when we were faced with what we were racing conditions you know we were low et the first run 
and we ran good the second run. So I feel that uh, we're pretty well rounded right now. Eight number one qualifiers, and you know we just got to keep picking at it. And consistency is the game. That's that's what's going to win us a championship. Is lots of runs down the racetrack. Robert, just before we let you go here, uh, what can we expect out of you and the team as you head in to Seattle and wrapping up this West Coast swing? Well, uh, it's a, that's a fun track. Uh, I love it. I love it up there. Finally got a win there, I think, two years ago. Uh, first first final I had up there was against Eric Medlin. He beat me in the final. And, uh, you know, I, I guess it would be pretty cool to go up there and be number one qualifier, say that you were number one qualifier of all three of the West Coast swing races. And uh, we want to go get another win. All right, buddy. Well, best of luck to you. Tell John congratulations on the Corvette. <laughs> Go get another Wally up there in Seattle, and we'll get caught up with you soon. All right, guys. Hope to be talking to you real soon. All right, Robert Hyde. 50 wins. And when we come back, we're going to have Billy Torrance with us here on the straight line. But next time you need auto parts and accessories, trust the professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts. For decades, professional technicians have counted on O'Reilly Auto Parts for their knowledge and commitment to customer service. And you can too. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today. Better parts, better prices, every day. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. It wasn't just built to be a museum. It was built to be a shrine to the history, heritage, and future of the sport we love. This is our house, the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and it's packed full of classic and present-day cars, including Petties, Earnhardts, and Waltrips, as well as interactive experiences, realistic racing simulators, and much more. Plan a trip to the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte. Tickets at NASCARHall.com. NASCAR Hall of Fame. This is our sport. This is our house. NHRA drag racer Doug Herbert here to talk about safe driving. In early 2008, my two sons were killed in a car accident that was caused by speeding and inexperience. After the accident, I learned that over 6,000 teenagers each year are killed in car accidents, so I formed a nonprofit organization called Brakes. Brakes stands for Be Responsible and Keep Everyone Safe. Please visit our website at putonthebrakes.org to learn more about responsible driving and what you can do to keep our roads safe. Back here on MRN's The Strain Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts, our friends at Hercules Tires, we've been telling you about giving away a free set of tires, one set of tires a month. What you do is you go to HerculesTire.com slash MRN, just register, and maybe you take home a free set of tires. Not a bad deal. Everybody likes a free set of tires. Everybody likes a free anything. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hercules Tires backslash MRN. There you go. Yeah, we appreciate them being a part of this. And Billy Torrance joining us on the line here now, the most recent winner in the top field category. Congratulations, Billy, on that big win at Sonoma. And I'm just looking at the stats here. You have not raced in seven events this season. You've competed in eight. You've taken home two victories now. And you've had a final round appearance also and a semi-round appearance. Man, that's pretty good for a part-timer. <laughs> yeah, those guys, I, I, you know, uh, when I show up out at the race, at you know, to come racing with them, they have me a really well prepared uh, hot rod, and and I've got there's four guys that work full time there at the shop, and then four flying guys, and and uh, you know, and all of Steve's guys pitch in, and and uh, so I've got uh, I've got the best of both teams over there helping me out. Hey Billy, going into the final, you guys had lane choice. Uh, how, you you had to be pretty confident going into the final. What do you think going up there? and fighting for another win, the the ninth win for the last 10 races for the Torrance Racing Team. Well, you know, I was uh, I was I was pretty confident the car had really run well. It made a good, safe pass. The, the pass before we, you know, had sneaked up on Steve and, and got him there. But uh, so I thought we probably had a little performance advantage. I, I needed to get up there and, and uh, do my job, keep it in the groove, and and make sure the, that nose went past first. And, and uh, that's what happened, just barely, but but uh, we got her done. You know, now, Billy, with this most recent win, you are just outside of a spot in the countdown with, what, three races to go before the countdown gets started. 
does that change the schedule of appearances now? Do you do you suddenly go, okay, we can get this second Capco car in the countdown if we maybe gather up a few more points? No, no, it, it doesn't. We're gonna we're gonna continue we're, we're gonna continue along the path we started. We certainly it's uh, I'm 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 very pleased with the with what we've done this year, but uh, we're gonna sit out uh, the next race there at Seattle, and we'll show up at Brainerd in Indy, and hopefully we can do well and and uh, you know make it in there. And, and uh, but we but we can't complain. We've had a wonderful time and, and uh, haven't been detrimental to the A team helped them a time or two with, you know, trying different discs and levers and setups. And that's what, what we're really there for. Hey, Billy, how many more races do you have planned this year? So you're taking off Seattle, you're going to Brainerd, Indy, and, and what uh, what's the plan for the rest of the season? I think I'll, if I if I did make it into the countdown, I would race all of the countdown races. But I think I'm penciled in to race four or five of them anyway. All right. But I'm just curious, as, as I'm thinking about this, I know you, you – as you mentioned, you kind of run a bit of an R and D program for for Steve's main car, but couldn't you also, if you did run these last few races and guarantee yourself a spot in the countdown, I don't want to say you'd be a blocker, but you could also help be a detriment to some of the other competition for Steve, even if Steve's the main goal for winning the title for the organization by knocking oh, people yeah. out of rounds. Yeah, I think that we'll be we'll be successful in doing that anywhere we show up. I mean, we have, you know, we really have. I mean, we really have a good car in the in the team. I mean, I have, uh, you know, Walt Prisbel and Jake McCullough make the calls on the car, and, and Dom Lagana is a, one of my full time guys, and, and uh, you know, he's a car chief, and and uh, I've got you know Jimmy Marcellus, and Wes Barber, and and you know the, these other guys. I've got some really core group guys out there. We'll we'll have a We'll have at least the next best car on the property when we show up. <laughs> no doubt. And, and right now, having the next best car uh, from from Steve's car is pretty darn good. Yeah, it really is. Those guys, man, that's a that's a well oiled machine over there. We we sneaked up on them, and and, uh, and you know I don't think they expect us to run a seventy seven. We we couldn't. We really we've not had a lot of luck outrunning those guys. And I'll tell you flat out, we've tried. We've had some pretty close races. Billy, we were talking about it in our opening segment about, I was asking Doug, if you had to pick one thing that's really made the difference for your organization, we were trying to come up with one thing. And as we broke it down, uh, you know, you have the, the guys tuning the car. Obviously, you and Steve behind the wheel are both doing a tremendous job as drivers. There's the budget for the organization being able to replace parts quicker than a lot of guys maybe would. And then the other thing that's maybe sitting out there that not a lot of people are talking about is just what you're doing as that second car in doing some testing and R and D work. That's maybe helping uh, dial Steve's car in when it's needed. If you had to pick one of those four, what would you say is most important? Well, certainly, certainly you, you've got to, you've got to, if you got to pick one, I'm going to, I'm going to say the program that Richard and, and Bobby and, you know, and, and of course Jake's in there, but, it, but primarily Richard and Bobby, the program that they have for cycling parts and keeping, keeping uh, good parts all the time. Uh, I, I think that that's, uh, that's key. I mean, and, and, you know, their, their management on their clutch disc, is uh i mean that that's that's got to be it that's i mean you guys know what makes these cars run and, and i mean when you can keep the when you literally have the same same setup the same car week in and week out i i think that that's that's key right there yeah having the car when you go to the starting line everybody's only got one of everything but to know that you have the best that you can possibly have in your car that's a boy that's a good feeling to have when you go to the starting line right I, I I agree. I, I got to think that that's uh, you know, it's either going to be that or it's going to be Mama K. I, you know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her standing in the center of the track when you were racing Steve. Was she leaning? I mean, was she leaning either way, uh, or she standing right directly in the middle? I can guarantee you, she was leaning toward that baby boy. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Billy. Nobody has watched. Down. Nobody has watched Steve develop as a driver more than you have. Uh, he is obviously one of the, the – the team's great. 
but let's give Steve the due that he deserves as well. He's doing a phenomenal job behind the wheel of that car, going back to last year. What have you seen out of Steve that maybe has come on the second half of last year where he really got on this hot streak that's going through this season that is different than the Steve Torrance we knew before? I think that Steve Torrance has probably matured as a young man in the last two or three years and I, and, and set his set his sights on what he really wanted to do because, I mean, he's so busy. I mean, Steve works here at Capco at least five days a week, at least 12 hours a day. And, uh, I mean, I, we demand that Capco, you know, pays the bills, and this is, this is what Steve Torrance will retire from. But, uh, you know, I think he's, he's been able to focus here, and he's been able to focus at his, at his racing, and he's become more, uh, you know, he just, he's just in, intense at everything he does, and uh, he just don't waste time anymore. He used to just be, you know, he's young and uh, having fun. And, uh, of course, like I say, his, his mom's out there with him, and she demands, she demands he keeps up with his end of the deal. Well, I'll tell you what, Mama Kay needs to keep doing what she's doing because it's working just fine. If there was one thing, Billy, that you could attribute the success to, uh, is there? It, it's got to be probably assembling the right group of people because you've had the same group of people together for quite some time, and it seems like everybody really meshes well as you know part of it, right? Oh, you're 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 right, Doug. I mean, that's that's uh, that's key. Those guys, the, the, especially the guys that are on Steve's team there, and and even even my guys and the guys that stay there at the shop, uh, they spend more time with with one another than they than they do at home. But that is a that is a well oiled machine. I mean, those guys they they've got each one of those guys. There's probably there's two other guys besides Richard and, and Bob that could probably tune the car. And uh, I mean, they're they're they, each one of them is well rounded in every aspect of what makes the car go. And each one of them is a check for the next guy. I mean, they just do not make mistakes, and uh, they check check double check. You know, looking at the stats here, there's been, what, 15 races now this season, and there's only four events where somebody not named Torrance was holding up the Wally. That is <laughs> that is great motivation. Um, but now the countdown is coming, and it's just a handful of races out from here. Keeping the team focused and motivated is, is tough, right? You don't want to peak too soon. We were talking with Robert Hyde about this uh, a segment ago. What do you guys do within your organization that keeps your guys motivated? You know, I think they, I think they enjoy every day. Uh, they enjoy, they enjoy the the job they have. Uh, as far as motivation, they they love to win. They're very competitive. I don't know that uh, there is a peak. These guys, they only race one round at a time. They really never look toward the next round. They're, uh, you know, they don't go to the race. They let's win the race. They come to the race and say, let's win, let's let's win first round. And, that's one second round, and I mean they just really stay focused like that, and and uh, you know it's uh it's just it's just done a they've done a good job at that, and you know I I'd like to say that uh I, I think that you know right on through the countdown they'll continue with the same you know head down attitude they're you know they're just going one round at a time. I think they enjoy winning, Billy, and you have done a great job. Uh, unbelievable. Billy Torrance, congratulations on your winning last weekend at Sonoma. Congratulations on the success with Steve's team. Uh, you guys have just made a heck of an impact on the sport of NHRA drag racing. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Doug. It's, we, we've been very blessed to be out there and be able to race as a family, and, and it's, uh, I, couldn't, uh, I, I just couldn't be more pleased. Well, it's been a lot of fun to watch, Billy. Congratulations, and we look forward to seeing you make the countdown and then watching both those Capco cars run throughout the rest of the year. Well, good luck, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Well, keep rooting for the old guys. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, you got that from both of us for sure. All right, Billy Torrance, join us. We'll be right back. Here's your chance to win a set of your very own Hercules tires. Go to HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Simply register, and each month we'll give away one set of tires. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading mileage coverage to get you wherever you need to go, no matter where the road takes you. Register now for your chance to win a set of Hercules tires at HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Hercules Tires, ride on our street. 
Hi, folks. Mike Bagley here. At MRN, we rely on equipment from Racing Electronics. Joey Logano to the lead on the back straightaway. Racing Electronics has scanners and headphones. We can listen to every uncensored conversation between driver and crew. You want the championship, baby? Yeah! And when we need live audio, in-car cameras, and up-to-the-second statistics, we use their latest handheld unit called Legend. To learn more about these products and many others, visit RacingElectronics.com. Racing Electronics, the official two-way communication partner of MRN. Give your vehicle tires a deep shine that lasts. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and see our selection of Meguiar's Spray-On Tire Coatings. Your choice, $5.99 each. Clean, shine, and protect with Meguiar's Tire Coatings on sale now at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. O'Reilly Auto Parts sponsoring MRN's uh, Straight Line as we get ready to wrap up the show. Ralph Shaheen, Doug Herbert with you. Um, we've had a lot of fun talking with uh, Robert Height and Billy Torrance already today. And the one yeah. guy we haven't talked about is our buddy Greg Anderson. I know, right? Last week's guest goes back-to-back, wins out there in Sonoma. I guess the uh, wine tasting tour with with his wife, Kim, must yeah. have went pretty well. And then they parlayed that into a victory on Sunday. So great job for KB Racing. Uh, Greg Anderson, super, super deal for those guys. In addition to, uh, uh, you know, winning the race, they just ran strong all weekend. Yeah, and it took them a while, right, as he talked about early on with us, to get that, while their motors were performing really well, it's taken a while for them yeah. to get going. And now all of a sudden he's back-to-back winner. Yeah, it seems like that pro stock class right now is really, really tight, right? Between those, yeah. I mean, everybody that's a qualifier is a potential winner Yeah, uh, is what it seems like. So, just, unbelievable. I mean, those races have been hard to win for a long time. You know, I have people ask me, well, you know, oh, yeah, that guy won Super Gas. That's not that hard. And I go, are you kidding me? Winning Super yeah. Gas is hard because <laughs> there's 50 or 60 cars show up to a race, and they're all pretty good racers. So, yeah. you win a Super Gas race, it's it's hard. You win and anything pro in the stock, National, oh, it's a big man. deal, right? Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. Speaking of the next NHRA National, that is up in the Pacific Northwest out at Seattle. So uh, go get your tickets at NHRA.com. Click on the red ticket tab in the upper right corner. Get some tickets. Go out to the Magic Dry Organic Absorbent NHRA Northwest Nationals. That's a mouthful. It is up near (laughs) Seattle. That'll wrap up the uh, West Coast Swing. Then we get a break. Then Brainer comes up. And, of course, the granddaddy of them all, the Chevy Performance U.S. Nationals Labor Day Weekend. At Indy. That's all you got to say. Indy. Indy. Yeah, everybody likes to go to Indy. U.S. National. So, yeah, don't miss that. Next race is coming up. We've got everybody hit, right? We've got the we've got the Northwest hit up. We've got the mid, you know, mid-central there with Brainerd. And then Indy, you know, here they come. Before we know it, they'll be back here in Charlotte. Right. It's right around the corner. And that will be leading us, of course, into the countdown off and running, right, when we get to Indy and all that. It's going to be... Yep. Be I, was I, I was curious. Uh, I was. I don't know what the right word is. When when Billy said that, eh, we're going to run these couple races, maybe get in the countdown. If we do get in the countdown, we'll run all. That didn't surprise me. I guess that much, but it did actually surprise me. He said, "No, if we get in the countdown, we will win all the races." Now that would be cool, right? His son wins a championship last yeah. year, and then maybe he could win. There's yeah. never. I you know Connie, uh, Scott Coletta won has won several championships. Connie never won a championship. He was right in the running a few years. We had uh, Tim Richards as a crew chief. Like, they were yeah. running really good. They could potentially win the championship. But for a father and son to win uh, championships, that would be awesome. And I don't know if Steve, maybe he wouldn't think that was yeah, awesome. But You know, I was surprised by that. I know we got to get into red light, green light. We'll get there in just one second. I just, as I was thinking about it, that car is so good that if you could get him in to the countdown, you have a shot at going one and two. Yeah certainly in the championship. And the other thing is, I mean, obviously he can go to any race and he can knock people out of rounds, yep. but I would think they'd want to go for one and two. It doesn't seem like budget is an issue. Maybe right. maybe it is because you want to save that money to put all the good parts in Steve's car. Well, and you got to figure out what's the priority. Do you go up there and race each other or, you know, maybe they – I mean, you, you hate to say it. I mean, but look back at the history of team racing, right? I mean, yeah, there, you pick somebody that you want to win, and then the other one is helping that guy win. And then when they race each other, you know, this guy smokes the tires or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know the way that I've seen them do it so far. They race each other like they, they race sure each do. other hard every time. But you got to think. I mean, they're spending a lot of money. 
when it gets down to the last couple races or making a decision if one of them's going to win the championship or not, how does that work out? I don't know. That's a tough decision to make. And they've, they've, I was just looking at the stats. They've only met each other a couple times in rounds so far this year, and it's just about even yeah. as to who's trailered who. Uh, all right, let's talk red light, green light now. Uh, and we've really kind of struggled here today to come up with a red light, and that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Right? doesn't mean there's anything really no red light. Yeah. wrong or bothering <laughs> us when we think about what's happened in the world of drag racing right now. Uh, green light, and maybe it's kind of a little bit of a red light, is the fact that Clay Milliken isn't really getting – the recognition that he and his team deserve. That might be a good thing. Green light, they're performing really well. Red light, maybe kind of that they're not getting the the attention they deserve. Right. Well, if it wasn't for the domination, we're showing on our screen up here the finish line for Billy Torrance and, and uh, Clay Milliken. I mean, it's it's a wheel. It's it's less than a wheel. Yeah. It's a, What a close race out there in Sonoma. But there again, like you say, Clay Milliken, if it wasn't for the dominating performance by Torrance Racing, Clay Milliken's having a banner year, unbelievable, right? Yeah. They've ran great. They've had low E team top speed at, at several races. Yep. And the big shake up last year, uh, uh, David Grebnik left, went over to Forces, went in Brittany Forces car, and Milliken's team really didn't miss a beat. I got to credit, you know, I mean, Mike Clover has named the creature, but I've got to credit to Jim Overhoffer. Jim O's my friend. He's been on the show a bunch of times. He took a combination over there that has let that team not miss a beat. They've went down the track. I'm sure they still took, you know, they kept some of their clutch setup that they had. Uh, you know, Chris Knockman over here does clutch setup a little bit for those guys. And then David Grebnik had his special little tricks he put in there. But when Grebnik left, some of the people remember, I mean, he, he kind of took his notebook with him. I don't know. They got it sorted out. Maybe they got some of that back. I don't know exactly. But for that team to run as good as they have this year, and they've got a smaller budget. I don't think it's a really a big... Uh, uh, mystery that they've got a less budget than, you know, lo lower, smaller budget than a lot of the other teams. I think that's just incredible. Oh, and this weekend they're running with a Denzel Auto Parts on their car with, guess what? Brakes! For their, yeah. their, their, <laughs> the Denzel Brakes car, Clay Milliken, this weekend at Seattle. So that's exciting for me, too. I'm proud proud to uh, have be a good friend with, with Clay yeah. and also uh, proud of his support for what we're doing with the charity. You know, Clay lost his son in a motorcycle yeah. crash. Him and I obviously have had, you know, that's the reason we had Doug Zilla stuff. We had a big clash, but we became, you know, pretty good, you know, the best of friends, really. Five final round appearances this year. That's basically a third of the season. That's impressive. I mean, if it wasn't for Torrance. He, yeah, know, yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. Um, as, I, as I was looking here, uh, I got to put the glasses on to see what I'm looking <laughs> at, right? That's what uh, Billy said. Old guys, old guys, were, we are rooting for old he, guys. So here. he lost to Crampton, Salinas, Torrance once. Torrance twice, Steve, and then Billy. So there's yeah. three final round appearances against a Torrance car right. that cost him wins. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. At any rate, that's definitely a green light. Well, red light and green light, right? Yeah. Clay Milliken running really, really well. Green light. Probably, you know, it's just unfortunate. This is coming at the same time when Torrance has probably the hottest history, uh, the hottest run and uh, streak in drag racing history. I I'm guessing pretty close. I can't think of what the next one would be. Yeah, well, the next one will be the Northwest Nationals. <laughs> For Doug, I'm Ralph. Enjoy the races from up there in the Pacific Northwest. We'll talk to you next week.